Yo, what's going on guys? It's your boy Rags, and in today's video, we have something special for you guys. Elden Ring for Dummies. Elden Ring is one of the most complex games that you could play, so I'm taking all the complexity of the game and dumbing it down to layman's terms. What's going on in the game? What attributes should you be upgrading? All that jazz. Here's gonna be the rough outline for the video. We got hero selection. That's where you gotta start, obviously. What attributes should you be upgrading? What builds should you be focusing on? Navigating the game. Where's Touch of Grace? What is Grace? Finding the map so that you can actually unlock and see everything. And most importantly, in my opinion, is combat. Understanding how to fight in this game is so important because you'll see this game could just be a death simulator. You're just fighting enemies and you have nowhere to go. You just keep dying repeatedly. It doesn't matter if you're facing a boss or just some wolves in a forest. You are could you really could die at any moment and then at the end of the video we're gonna be taking some questions that i got from twitter so if you guys have any more questions keep tweeting them at me this is going to be probably the first part of a series of elden ring so this is going to be the beginner's guide we'll come out with a little bit of like an intermediate guide and then an expert guide as well if you guys like this content make sure you smash that like button subscribe to the channel if you're new and then comment below which hero build did you select all right let's get into the video First, let's start with hero selection. It's the very first thing you do in the game, and it's very important to get your character off on the right foot. I went with Samurai because I wanted a character that could be really good in hand-to-hand -hand combat, something that I could use like with a sword and a shield. I went with the Samurai because not only did I get the Katana, which has a great unsheath ability, but I also get the Longbow, which has a very, very, very strong ability in Mighty Shot. So I get a little bit of ranged, and I get a little bit of the hand-to-hand -hand close combat. So if you're someone that wants that same style of gameplay, and I would recommend that for beginner players if you're really not too familiar with like Dark Souls and if you've never played Elden Ring before, start with a character that has good strength, good dexterity, good endurance. I would recommend either Vagabond or Samurai. Those are going to be the best characters probably in hand-to-hand -hand combat. If you are someone who wants to go down the magic route and you really want to use all these spells and all these enchantments and sorcery, I would recommend Astrologer. My second playthrough is going to be with the Astrologer because the magic looks so much fun to use. But again, it's a little bit more complex than just running up to someone and just starting a sword fight, for example. So it's important to get the right character base down because it'll give you a certain boost in character traits. That's why if you want to go with the melee builds, go with the Vagabond or the Samurai, it'll give you a boost in strength, in dexterity, in vigor that sort of thing and the same thing with astrologer and the magic side of the game so outside of traits you also get certain starting weapons like i mentioned the samurai gets the katana and the longbow so you do get those weapons as well you are able to find certain weapons throughout the game as well so if you want a certain weapon from a character you can always find it throughout the map it's also really important to note that after the whole character creation you will get something called a keepsake here it is very important that you choose the golden seed this will give you one extra heal and it'll give you a massive advantage when you're first starting out in elden ring going off hero selection the next important thing to understand is attributes how do the attributes work which traits should you increase and how should you be spending your runes now, the reason why hero selection is so important is, like I said, it gives you a jump start on certain attribute types. So when I'm a samurai, I'm really trying to make a build to hit people a couple times and dive away. So I really want my dexterity to be good. I want my vigor to be good for extra health points. I want my endurance so I can continuously strike opponents. It's very important to understand your build and understand your character. If you're a magic type of player, like a sorcerer or an astrologer, you really want high intelligence, faith, and arcane. It wouldn't really do much for someone fighting with magic to have high strength, and it wouldn't really do anything for someone who's fighting hand-to-hand -to, -hand to have high faith, for example. You're, you have to use your strengths, and these Dark Souls-type games, these Elden Ring-type games, it's very important to double down on your strengths. You don't really want this well-built-out character. Like, you don't want all of your traits at level 20. You want, like, dexterity at 30, strength at 30, intelligence at 10, if you're fighting hand-to-hand -hand and in combat. I hope that makes a little bit of sense. And then with any build, it's very important to get up vigor because it increases your overall health. Endurance, because that is like your stamina bar, so that's always important to grow. And what type of equipment you're able to, to kind of carry and load. And then mind is important too for any character, but most importantly for magic type characters because that is the FP is what's used every time you cast a spell, call in spirit ashes, or use any of those type of attacks. 
So you should really understand your build, how you want to focus and play on the game. Like I am a samurai. I am upgrading dexterity as much as I can, endurance, vigor, and strength. I'm not really going to touch intelligence, faith, or arcane. It's not going to do anything for me fighting hand-to-hand -to, -hand to have my faith at 50. It just doesn't do anything. So understand your build. It's extremely important. And like I said, it is very important to really double down on your strengths and continuously upgrade those trades. You don't want to have this well-rounded jack of all trades. You want the master of one. All right, so we talked about hero selection, talked about attributes, how you should be leveling up, what traits you should be focusing on. Now let's talk about navigating the game. And Robbie Breen put this perfectly. First question, what am I doing? Literally don't know where to start. I'm just running around and getting smoked. I felt the same way when I first loaded into this game. So let's dumb it down as much as we can. Every time you see the lost grace and you touch grace, that's like a checkpoint. Think of that as a checkpoint, and at any point, you can fast travel to these locations. It's very important to understand that part as part of the game, and then any time you need to either replenish your health, you need to get a couple more flasks to heal yourself, use the site of grace and rest at the site of grace, and it will replenish everything. But when you rest there... All your enemies that you killed around you will also come back. So say, for example, you leave at the first step and you see the tree sentinel. You kill the tree sentinel somehow, like some magical way, right? If you go and rest at a site of grace, he will reappear. So it's very important to understand that. Also, the sites of grace have these like, almost they look like yellow beams floating across. And you'll see these on the map. That is pointing you in the direction of where to go. Not every single site of grace has these but use that as a general guidance on where to go in the game. This is like the simplest tip I can give anyone. If you follow a road, it will lead somewhere. There will be something on the sides of the road at some point or enemies at some point in that road. So roads are very important. I mean, it sounds simple, but I think a lot of people forget this. Sometimes just follow a road. Never be afraid to kind of summon your torrent, your horse, and just ride past enemies. When I first started the game, I just rode past everyone because I wasn't a high enough level to get by people. But when you first start on the first step, you want to dip all the way left around the tree sentinel and reach this church of Eleth. That is like your first sight of grace, and that is very important. And now, it's very important to talk about where do you find the map? How do you open up the map and see something instead of all this like black clouds? You'll notice these little marks that look like lighthouses. This site on the map is if you mark it and ride to it or go to it, it will show you the map of that area. So next time you open up your map, you'll actually see a detailed layout of how the entire territory looks. That's very important, and it's a little bit of a hidden tip that players find out as you play. Use that to your advantage, because once you open up the map, you can see the terrain and understand and see where to go more specifically. All right, so now we're getting into the game a little bit. We understand hero selection. We understand the attributes, where you should be leveling up, what traits, at what points. We're navigating the game now. We understand the sites of grace. We understand kind of where to go, follow some roads, follow the beams from the sites of grace, and we understand how to open up the map. Now, probably the most important part of the game, combat. And it is very, very difficult. Elden Ring is one of the hardest games because the combative style is so adaptive and difficult not only do you have to be able to dodge and play defensively but you have to be able to dodge at the perfect time and dodge in the right spot sometimes if you roll in the wrong spot you're gonna get whacked when you go into these fights it's very important to think of yourself like a boxer but like floyd mayweather floyd mayweather is one of the best defensive fighters of all time and he's a counter puncher you have to think of yourself as in Elden Ring has a counter attacker. You're not going to be like Mike Tyson and just one tap knocking people out. It's not going to happen and you will die over and over and over again. That's why I always die in Elden Ring. I get way too aggressive. And the people who will kill you in this game are the, the creatures that you think you should kill so easily. You'll see a pack of wolves. You'll underestimate them and then you'll die because you're not playing smart. So you have to understand how to dodge and roll. You have to to play defensive. I cannot stress this out enough. But Elden Ring is a game all about dodging at the right time. So it's really important to kind of memorize how your opponent strikes. So anytime you go into a fight, whether it's a boss fight or any random creatures throughout the entire map, try to memorize their attacks because their patterns will be the same. 
an enemy's not really going to break out a new move after like their 15th strike. It's just not going to happen. The fights in this game take a little bit of time, but one error from you, and you could lose it all. And you don't want to lose your runes. It's very important to stay alive and to win these fights. So dodging at the right time. It takes a little bit of time, but go into the fights and think, I am a defensive fighter. I'm not going to knock him out in one punch. And don't get greedy. This happens to me way too often. I try to get one too many strikes in when I finally get that counterattack. Leaves me vulnerable, and I get whacked. It's also important to note, if you dodge at the wrong time, you can still get hit and get hit bad. And in most of these games that most people are used to playing, you're able to kind of roll and dodge at any time, and you, you are kind of invincible at all times. In Elden Ring, you have to do it at the perfect time. And if you get broken out of your pose, that's when your character, like, just cannot move, right? He's just knocked down, and you're just getting whacked. It's very important not to leave yourself vulnerable, so understand how to counterattack and dodge at the perfect times. Most enemies, I find myself doing this. I will dodge too soon. Enemies have, like, kind of a long attack. Like, if they go like this, they might, like, hesitate, right? And then attack. So you just have to time it perfectly. It's very difficult, but use those tips to your advantage. And then also, fight to your strengths, right? I'm a samurai. I'm getting up in people's faces. Bop, bop, bopping out. Bop, bop, bopping out. If you're someone who fights at range, fight at range. Don't try to get in sword fights with characters when you have a long range or a magic build. It's not going to work out in your favor. And that's why it also goes back to your attributes, understanding your strengths. This game it's funny yeah, because it's almost like you just have to double down on your strengths. There's not going to be one build that works for everybody, but you have to understand your play style. I'm someone who likes to play really aggressive. That's why I use a samurai. Get in, get out, and kind of take the fight to them. Understand your attributes. Understand your strengths. And then one thing I really want to touch on that's very important, attribute scaling on weapons. It's very important to understand what these do. Under your weapons, you'll see some attribute scaling, and you'll see like an E, a D, a C, a B, an A, or an S. So the higher your grade, the better. S is the best, A is obviously better, but E is the worst. What this means, so for example, on my hook claws, I have dexterity is a C and strength is an E. So if I increase one level of dexterity, it will strengthen my hook claws more than if I... Uh, upgrade my strength by one, okay? Let me repeat that. Because it's a better grade, my dexterity is more important on my hook claws. So when you're looking at your weapon, whatever weapon you have equipped, look at that attribute that scaling so because fast. it's very important. The only way to upgrade these attributes to increase the letters is to upgrade your armaments through the blacksmith and use those smithing stones. Upgrading your levels will not actually impact your attribute scaling, what it will do is when you upgrade your attributes, it will then make the weapon stronger by a more or a less amount. For example, a C will affect the weapon more than an E. So whatever attribute has the highest grade, that's the most important attribute to focus on if you want to get stronger with that weapon. I almost closed out of the combat section without talking about one of the most important things of the game, and that is upgrading your weapon through the blacksmith. Get your smithing stones, and upgrading your weapons is some of the most important things you can do to increase your strength and everything about your attacks. I have my hook claws at plus five right now, and the difference from even level four to five, or obviously one to two, is so massively different that once you really want to start taking out bosses and really doing some big damage, start farming these smithing stones. I answer a question later in this video about where's one of the best places to farm these smithing stones, but upgrade your weapons. And if I were you, I would stick with one or two weapons to upgrade. You don't want, for example, two swords to be both at plus three. You want one sword to be at plus five and the other one to just not be used. If you're a samurai, upgrade your katana or use whatever is your primary weapon. It's so important and will really take your combat to the next level. All right, now it's time for some questions from Twitter. First, we got Koopa at the real Troy D21. Samurai, shield and sword or two hand the katana? From what I've seen of samurai built, and I'm a little bit different because I go with the hook claws, you want to two hand the katana because then you're able to use the unsheath ability, and the unsheath ability on the katana is one of the most overpowered moves in the game. So I would absolutely recommend two handing the katana when in combat. 
Question here coming in from Pip Dog. He's chief of staff. Ashes of War are confusing but seem very important. So Ashes of War kind of give your weapon abilities. So the reason why I haven't used Ashes of War, I like the abilities on my weapons that I have. For example, the katana, like I just mentioned in the question before, has an unsheath ability. That ability is so good that I don't want to take away that ability. So the Ashes of War are able to give your weapon abilities that it wouldn't have to start. So when you collect them, see which ones they fit and what abilities you would like. Maybe do a little bit of research and then equip those on your weapons. You can always remove an Ash of War if you need to. I did that with my katana accidentally and then I, I ended up uh, removing Moving it and getting the unsheath ability back. This question comes in from PLG3. Some good place to farm runes. This is one of the best spots to farm runes. It's literally a rune cave, mine, whatever you want to call it. It's right to the south of the starting point. You'll jump down into like, it almost looks like a little tiny lake. And then in one of the northern corners, you'll see this cave entrance go into the cave and the entire thing is filled with smithing stones. It's one of the best advice you can give for anyone. Make sure you are upgrading your weapons. Smithing stone, nice. All right, we got a question coming in here from Ren. Is this a good Souls-like game for people new to the genre? Tried Sakuro and got pummeled, gave up on it. I never played the Dark Souls game, and I'm absolutely loving Elden Ring. It's one of the most fun games I've ever played, but part of the reason why I love it so much, it is so challenging, and the entire game is like one big puzzle. Every time you fight a new enemy, it's like a puzzle trying to figure out what they're doing, Learning the map is like a puzzle. Learning these jump puzzles you have to do to reach a new part of the map or unlock a new part of the map, it's all one big puzzle, so I absolutely love it. I think it's a great game to get pants? into because you don't have to know any storyline before coming into this game, so I would recommend it. I don't think it's a bad way to start in these Souls-like games. Interesting question coming in here from K Moods. For someone who only plays Madden and Call of Duty, why would Elden Ring interest me slash why should I play it? Honestly, this game is not for everyone. Let me repeat that. This game is not for everyone. It's so difficult. It's such a challenge, but it's so rewarding when you get to the next level or the next phase or level up somewhat. You have to really adjust your mindset if you want to enjoy this game. You have to understand that progression is so difficult, so you have to like celebrate all of the small wins. It's a great step back from a Call of Duty that's like constant action, constant action, constant action, death, 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 right? Same thing with War Zones, like there's hackers, there's left, right? And even like Madden, like there's all these game-breaking glitches. Elden Ring is a journey, and you're always progressing throughout this journey. And it's really fun to see your character what? go from like this weakling to like, yo, I just took down one of the biggest bosses in the game. So it's very rewarding to play whereas like it almost could be if you're like doing like a madden dynasty but i would relate it more to like a, a madden create a player where like you start a qb and he can't throw 20 yards without air mailing it and then all of a sudden he's he's slinging it down the field 50 60 yards throwing pinpoint passes that's what i would relate it to personally it's like that same reward for grinding like i feel like call of duty has no reward for grinding or playing the game aside from getting a win but like you get a war zone win you kind of just go to the next game. Nice. But throughout Elden Ring, you keep pro progressing. But nice. it's very important yeah. to note this game is really not it's meant really for really everyone. Some people are going to enjoy it. Some people are going to hate it and yeah. hate the grind and the struggle it takes to really progress and get to the next level. 100 Thieves Billy asks, How do I stop my crippling Valorant addiction to play more Elden Ring? If you're like me, Billy, I was so addicted to Valorant. Probably a couple weeks ago, I was getting the worst streak of random teammates to a point it just drove me off the game that's how i stopped kind of valorant did it itself i love valorant so much and i want to go back to the game but the teammates i get you wouldn't even fathom it is ridiculous so that's honestly what helped me valorant kind of shot itself in the foot if you will blake andrew my boy explain the messages and blood stains please messages is people that are playing the game they can leave a message think of Elden Ring is like everyone's playing the same world and you can see like these ghosts and silhouettes run by you. Those people are just leaving messages. I would say 95% of messages are trolls and about five are useful. If you praise a message, that person will actually heal up. So if you start leaving messages around and you start getting praised, 
you'll start healing up a little bit. The blood stains are where people die. So you can actually examine them and watch and see like a red outline of someone and see how they died. It's supposed to help you like learn how these people died so you don't fall for the same mistakes. Great question, Blake. All right, guys, that wraps up your Elden Ring for Dummies video. I hope this video helped a lot. If I didn't answer any questions, drop me a question in chat. Someone or myself will be able to answer it. Tweet at me, and we'll be doing more of these videos in the future. I want to help you guys and guide you guys through these this game. I'm so addicted to this game. I love it. So if you can't find me on Twitter, I'm probably streaming it on Twitch. So make sure you check out the stream. And make sure if you guys like the story content, smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. And then comment below what builds you wet with. See you guys in the next one.